Okay, let's have now the continuation. So the formulas of ionic compounds. In order for ionic compounds to be electronically neutral, the sum of the charge and the cations and an ions in each formula must be equal to zero to become neutral. So we have here an example, aluminum oxide from the okay from the two elements namely aluminum and oxygen here you have the aluminum aluminum three plus and oxygen two negative so these are the charges okay the charges of aluminum and the charges of oxygen so using the crisscross method you are going to okay share it so we have aluminum 3 plus the 3 will be transferred here to oxygen and for the oxygen the 2 negative will be shared to aluminum so now to check if the compound is an electronically neutral so you have here 2 okay you have 2 here plus 3 okay plus 3 here and then you plus 3 here and then times the 2 negative so do the operation 2 times plus 3 you have 6 plus 3 times negative 2 you have negative 6 so plus 6 plus negative 6 you have 0 now let's have here the diagram the diagram showing the rule in naming a certain formula or the nomenclature. Okay, so here, if the compound contains a metal and a non-metal, the compound is most likely an ionic. We have two types of ionic. An ionic that possesses only one possible charge. And we have here the metal cations that has more than one possible charge metal cation has more than one possible charge so here these are the other metal cations so going back here we have here the following monoatomic ions the alkali earth metal cations the alkali metal cations we have here some example of it the AJ+, plus, the EF3+, plus, the CD2+, plus, the ZN2+. Plus. It means this is, these are the possible charges, okay, that has only one, okay. These are the charges that host only one, okay, charge. So after that, you can name it using this rule. You are going to name first the metal, and add IDE ending to the root of the non-metal name. So we will have some example of that. Next, on the other hand, we have here the metal cation has more than one possible charge. So these are the other metal cations that were not named here. So in the nomenclature, you are going to name first the metal. You are going to specify the charge of the metal cation with Roman numeral in parentheses. And you are going to add IDE to root of non-metal name. Okay. So let's have this example. Okay. So again, to name the cation, omit the word ion. You are going to delete. And use a Roman numeral in the cation that have more than one possible charge. On the other hand, for the anion, omit the word ion. Just omit the word, just delete. So we have here some examples. We have sodium cyanide. So as you can see, sodium and the cyanide group. Again, the name of the sodium, wala po siyang Roman numeral because again, sodium has only one possible charge and that is one. So there's no need to indicate. 
On the other hand, we have FeCl2, or also known as the iron chloride. We all know that iron possesses more than, possi more than one possible charge, so that's why you need, to, uh, you need to put the Roman numeral to be specific. So we have here the iron 2 chloride. Okay, the 2, it only emphasizes the charge. Okay, the charge of iron. Okay, here we have the iron 3 chloride. So as you can see here, the charge of the iron before it was shared to chlorine. And again, don't forget, you are just going to put the Roman numeral in a certain chemical formula when a certain element possesses more than one possible charge. Okay. That is how you are going to name the ionic compounds. So now let's proceed to the polyatomic ions. So take note in the covalent banding in ionic species, poly polyatomic ions consist of a combination of two or more atoms. Always take note that formulas are determined following the rule or the same rule as ionic compounds containing only monoatomic ions. Ions must combine in ratio that are that give a neutral formula overall. So if we have here some example calcium phosphate. Okay, take note that calcium phase phosphate from derives from the two okay two groups. We have the calcium and we have the phosphate group. Okay, and using the crisscross method, they are going to share the charges to become electronically neutral. So here, the 2 plus will be shared to phosphate group and the 3 negative from the phosphate group will be shared to calcium. So now you are going to double check if they have electronically neutral charge. So you are going to do this. Sum of the charges is equal to 3. Okay. You are going to put 3 here from the, phos okay, from the phosphate. I have 3 here. And then, the plus 2 negative here from the calcium. Okay. Next, plus 2 here in the phosphate group. And then, multiply it with a 3 negative in the phosphate group. Okay, do the operation. 6 times plus 2, you have 6. Plus 2 times negative 3, you have negative 6. And equal to 0. So we have here some common polyatomic ions. When we talk about poly, common polyatomic ions, these are the usually polyatomic ions used in covalent bonding. So we have here for the cations, we have ammonium, hydronium, and mercury one, and their corresponding charges. Again, when we talk about polyatomic ions, they only consist the positive charges. Okay, so as you can see here in the superscript. And on the other hand, if we have a positively charged particles or species, we have also the negatively charged one. So for the acetate, azide, carbonate, chlorate, chloride, chromate, cyanide, dichromate, dihydrogen phosphate, Hydrogen carbonate or carbonate, bicarbonate rather, hydrogen phosphate, hydrogen sulfate or biphosphate. And we have additional one, the hydroxide, the hypochlorate, nitrate, nitrite, oxalate, perchlorate, permanganate, peroxide, phosphate, phosphite, sulfide, sulfate, thiocyanide. Okay.